Hey, 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 there is Pastor Kent with you, and I am also an addict. <coughs> and away we go, round and round the bottom, nobody knows. 25th. It. Eh. Fail. I can't. But. We can. I never got this concept, and I always hated when somebody said that. From the isolation of addiction, we find fellowship of people with common bond. One faith, one strength, and hope come from people sharing the recovery. Admit no weakness. Conceal all shortcomings. Deny every failure. Go it alone. That was the creed many of us followed. I denied that we were powerless over our addiction. That our lives had to become unmanageable. Despite the evidence to the contrary, many of us would not surrender without the assurance there was something worth surrendering to. Many of us took our first step only when we had evidence that addicts could recover in Narcotics Anonymous. In Narcotics Anonymous, we found others who believe in the same predicts, predi <laughs> persessment with the same needs. Whoever found tools that worked for them, these addicts are willing to share those tools with us and give us the emotional support we need as we learn to use them. Recovering addicts know how important the help of others can be because they've been given that help themselves. When we became a part of Narcotics Anonymous, we joined a society of addicts, like ourselves, a group of people who know what we help one another recover. Just for today, I am joining the bound of recovery. I found the experience, strength, and hope I need in the fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous. Today, at 22 years clean, I still call my sponsor. I still um, call him and talk to him. You know, why do I do that? Why do I think that's important? Because the addict in his own mind is a very dangerous place to be. You know? We've all heard in the program that we're only uh, sick as our deepest secrets. Well, if you do a step one, two, and three, and you don't find that power greater than yourself, then go back to you do. Um, because...
Um, you're never going to go it alone. No, you're just not. I did it for six months and then failed. No. I can't stress it enough. You know, an addict can't do this alone. You just can't. Um, you know, you really and truly, you can't. Um, you're, we're not meant to do this alone. We're not. You know. No. No. We need to understand that our life is more important than our reputation. Um, well, it doesn't matter um, what that issue is, you know. You know, it really doesn't matter. You know, whatever that problem is, you know, because we need to understand that the most important person in the rooms is ourselves. Because we have to get healthy first before we can help others. And to actually think that we can help somebody while we're sick is absolutely a foolish idea you know um, you just don't do that you know um, you never do that um, we have to make sure that you know, we're living our lives, you know, and uh, according to the way our God has it, not the way we think it should be, because, you know, um, when we get complacent in this program, you know, we tend to go astray and we tend to get lost in ourselves and in where we're supposed to be, you know, and how we're supposed to act. Um, it's important that we find that experience, strength, and hope in ourselves and that power greater than ourselves to restore us to sanity. You know, that step one, two, and three, short, short version of it. And, uh, 
it, it allows us um, to be able to empathize with other people in the program because it's important that we do this because an addict need never be alone you know uh, isolation is a really bad spot for us to be um, if I'm alone in my own thoughts that's the most dangerous place that I can be you know? it really is you know and uh, you have to understand that as an addict that the most dangerous spot for me to be as an addict is in my own headspace and uh, you know that's that's no kidding man that's that's downright truth and uh, you know um, why we want to play with our lives and the way we live is just ridiculous and you may be coming into the rooms as an addict and thinking oh but I'm not an addict you know I use once in a while well okay let us look at a list of substances we all know about alcohol to bill opiates tranquilizers prescription drugs non-prescription drugs over-the-counter drugs cocaine cannabis and antiums and hallucinogenics we all know about those but those are commonplace but this is what you didn't know impulse control disorders intermediate explosive disorder kleptomaniac compulsive stealing paranoia compulsively setting fires pyromania and gambling okay so you don't do any bad stuff like that but you know there is you know stuff eating or over excessive eating over excessive sex over excessive pornography using computers playing video games working overworking exercising over exercising you know spiritual obsession an oppression with a religious devotion you know there's such a thing as being religious and there's such a thing as being a religious fanatic and uh, you know um, the prime example of that is God God never you know bashed anybody over the head with the Bible seeking pain causing yourself pain cutting yourself or shopping you know the National Drug Association um, says that between 40 and 60 percent of recovering drug addicts will eventually relapse with heroin those rates are even higher that includes cocaine cannabis and other heavy substances some ex experts place the rate of relapse for heroin addicts at as high as 80 percent which means that the recovery rate may be as low as 20 percent so out of a hundred people 60 percent are going to fail on drugs you know small-time drugs you know 
prescription drugs, pain pills, things like that. But with the heavier drugs like heroin and cocaine and cannabis and methamphetamines, the, the rate goes up to 80%. That means one in four will fail. That's staggering odds. Drug detection factors. Now, if you're in probation, this is very important for you to listen to. The type of test depends on the dose, the tolerance, the potency, the metabolicalism of the person, and the existence of medical conditions. Because sometimes with medical conditions, you can get over it. Drug detection times for alcohol is usually five days and usually 12 hours in the blood. Amphibians is three days and usually 12 hours in the blood. Barbiturates is four days and usually two days in the blood. Benzopazazines is six weeks and two days or three days in blood. Now here's one that people don't know. You think cannabis is safe? It takes up to 30 days for it to come out of your urine and two weeks in your blood. Cocaine is four days and one to two days in your blood. Codeine is one day. So that's medical, so that would probably be allowed on a drug test. Heroin is four days and 12 hours in the blood. LSD is three days or two to three hours in the blood, so it goes away quickly. That doesn't make it easier to use. MDMA, which is ecstasy. Methamphetamines or crystal meth, six days, up to three days in the blood. Methadone is four days in the urine and 36 hours in the blood. Morphine is two days in the urine and eight hours in the blood. And you may think you're safe, but for many years they've had this detection, which is a drug detection in the hair. Now, this is a scary thing. Drugs on their metabolism may be detectable in hair. Hair grows at a rate of approximately one centimeter per month. So depending on the length of your hair, it may be possible to determine drug use over the recent months. You know, you have to understand that in the day and age when people were losing their kids left, right, and center for drug addiction, um, this was the test they were using, was the hair follicle test. So just because you think you're safe, you're not. So stop while you're ahead. This has been my wrap. May God bless and keep you safe and sound and blessing on my flock. If you're on this page and you see this, right down here in the left-hand corner, left-hand corner, right down here is a subscribe. It's a red subscribe. It's like a stop sign. Hit it. You will get notification every time that I do a video. And please leave a comment because I like reading your comments. You know, if there's a topic you'd like me to talk about, I would love to talk about that topic for you. 
you know, I'm a drug addiction counselor. I am a licensed minister. So, you know, feel free to ask me any question. If I can't answer it, I have a repertoire of friends who can help me answer that. <laughs> May God bless and keep you.